Hello, welcome to The Wealth Transfer. I'm Terry Saka, Chief Strategist, and I'm along with Dr. Charles Vance, and we invite you to a show this day, this evening, that is gonna be filled with a lot more data to help you understand that the world's complacency, as well as the world's uncertainty and how it all plays together. Lot of, was that a toss off? No, you know what it is? I actually, I think I heard a producer talking and I thought he was stopping the program, but it's okay. This is live take type television, so. Well, here, there is a lot of uncertainty in the world. Yeah. Although, you know, you mentioned this last week that uh, people that are conservative have kind of relaxed because they think, well, Donald Trump's in, he's not a politician. And he's going through that term drain the swamp is probably crude, but nevertheless, it's been used. We're going to get rid of the political atmosphere that is in our politics. But the fact is, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty, even when somebody such as himself, and thank God for people like Mike Pence and uh, people, the, the uh, new appointee for the Supreme Court, those guys uh, are people with a Christian background that stand up and say that it's right to have a Christian background. Thank God they're not ashamed of it. But we can't become complacent with the world. Sometimes people think, well, somebody else is fixing our problems for us, but we are actually responsible for ourselves. Management is a key issue in the scriptures that God holds us responsible to manage the things that he puts within our grasp. Terry, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 25 is the parable of the talents, and it's one of the most profound because the scripture said he gave to every man according to his own ability. And then he made him responsible to manage what he had, not what somebody else had, mm -hmm. what he had. So many times we allow our thinking to go, well, our social security is going to take care of us. Our retirement's going to take care of us. The government's going to take care of us. And we should be making sure that we manage what belongs to us, what we've worked hard for. You, you say this continually. You know, our That's hard earned. That's our biggest concern. Yeah, it's yes. my concern as well. Because we've been, we've had our Social Security, not Social Security, but our IRAs and mm. retirements in the wrong place as a kingdom. Uh, we have a lot of the kingdom and ministries of cash in the banks. And just since 9-11, of course, if you had had your IRA in physical silver versus in the uh, wiles of the stock market and bond market, you would be up significantly. I mean, a $100,000 IRA since 9-11 is worth 400000 today, increasing your ability to have buying power. And this is the key for the kingdom. It's about buying power. This is not about investment purposes. And if we're going to maintain the protection and preservation of our kingdom, uh, let alone our individual retirement, we need to be in the right place. And the reason we're saying this is the dollar has been under severe attack uh, globally for quite some time, let alone what's getting ready to take place shortly. Um, you're seeing the, as we talked the last week, about the communists uh, as well as socialists unrest uh, globally, mind you, the global elite unrest towards President Trump. Unfortunately, what he has to do to fix the tsunami economically that's coming to the Western world yeah. is a lot. Now, we left off talking about the uncertainty in policy, but look at this chart in China. Now, remember, China, China has printed so much money as well. And it's known as a shadow banking, meaning it's the alternative financials underneath the real system. <clears throat> Shadow banking in China bubble is so enormous, it's unbelievable. They are in trouble in China financially. The stuff, they built the cities, they built the roads, and you can look at the maps, they have cities that no one's living in. So the big boom we've had in all the money printing in the last seven, eight years um, has been only because of money printing. But we've, we've done, we've worked it out. There is no more to build. Well, of course, micro, there is, but I'm talking in a massive macroeconomic situation. So while we're going around renegotiating trade deals, uh, we you know, label China as a currency manipulator, you haven't seen fireworks yet. But we have to do this to prepare ourselves for the tsunami that's coming economically. Now, America, and the wind, don't worry, because it's soon enough, I'd get peace of mind first. I mean, to be fair, America, the Federal Reserve's banking system is a, is a currency manipulator as well. <laughs> I mean, well, come on, I let's know, be fair. I know. Let's be fair. I In know. fact, it seems like all of the institutionalized governments of the world 
or have been manipulating currency. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody is off the gold standard. There's nobody yes. that has a, a tangible asset standard, which means that there's nothing backing that money that they continue to print. That's right. So if people came to turn it in and say, I want you to give me something for this, they're going to give you some more money for it. I read mm-hmm. a story a few years ago that a guy uh, had a, uh, a silver certificate and he actually sent it into the Federal Reserve and said, I want you to send me my silver for this. And it was a $10 bill and they sent him two $5 Federal Reserve notes is what they sent him back. Oh no. Because there's nothing there. Uh, so <laughs> that's the kind of situation our banking system is in. You know, you mentioned the, the government uh, the current government, federal government, being at odds with the Federal Reserve banking system. And many times people think it's the same thing. It's not. The rich elite of the world run the currency systems and the people that have the money uh, rule the world, uh, no matter what people think. Well, I, and, I know that's a great <clears throat> quote there by Rothschild when he says, I don't care who makes the laws as long as I control the money, you know. And, Absolutely. And so let's look at this thing with China. I know the that index right there you see is the Economic Policy Uncertainty Index, uh, the three-year moving average in China, as well as the red there in China. Now, this is interesting because if you've noticed, this goes all the way back to 1995 on the left. Look at the uncertainty index in China on the right there. That is enormous uncertainty. Now, That's what's, the what's, shadow banking. What's it mean by uncertainty? Meaning Who, they have, uncertain? that means oh, the whole system in general. Oh, just the they, whole system. They is. have printed money. They've expent the money. Their shadow banking system has loaned out trillions and trillions. They now have full-blown capital controls in place, trying to keep the Chinese even from taking their money out of the country. So you're going to see a lot less Chinese buying American real estate. But that is an incredible spike in the uncertainty index going back to the 90s. On the right side there, you're seeing it is imploding, which means we're on the verge of something taking place in China. Now, as China goes, the world's going. But I'm just merely trying to outline as we show you this, the world is at a peak for a moment. And we need this big correction and cleansing which I would call even a, um, cleansing is not even the word, we've, we've heard of this as um, a parody that's going to be taking place to some extent. Uh, I mean, look at the global earnings breath. This is why you see the cycles taking place now. The global earnings uh, breath here, uh, proportion of countries that are negative year-over-year earnings. But look at the staggering difference there. Now, the top line is your is the whole index world and then on the bottom there is the proportion of countries now what i really want to outline more than anything the two big mountains or the mountains you see the one on the left the middle and the right do you see where they peak and they bottom and then they both converge back down to each other and then they separate again come back down to each other separate again i want you to notice on the right do you notice how separated they are what that really is indicating to you is we're on the verge of them coming together again. Now, it could stay a little while longer because it's possible. And if you've noticed on the top right there on that index, you notice how it started coming down and went back up? Purely fake. It's almost like the Trump effect type coming back up. That's the Trump effect. And it has been fake money from the Federal Reserve doing the buying, uh, known as plunge protection team. This stock market was going down and gold was going a lot higher at the, on election night. And then it, sh- it shifted. But this chart behind us shows such a massive separation. And this goes over back to 1993 on the left to today. This is an extraordinary chart. What it's really showing you is it's his earnings, global earnings. So the market system has gotten way out of whack to the actual earnings and you, these lines are going to come together again. So you're, you're saying that, that the, this is indicating that the market is way higher than the actual earnings of yes. the companies yes. that are in the market. Globally. <clears throat> so there's an inflation. Like somebody's almost playing with the books, but it's an, yes. it's an over... It, it's people having overconfidence yeah. in the market and not really putting their confidence where they should be is in the actual numbers. That and it's governments doing the buying. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the more buying and selling, the more the market seems to. Right. Move up. That's what I'm trying to mm. illustrate. This market's not real. 
because it doesn't even come close to the earnings. Mm. So what we're really showing is the globe is getting ready for a retroactive move. Something is getting ready to take place. And we want to continue to show you the data because you need to know the Trump effect is not going to last. They will use the, the global downturn and try to blame him for everything. As you saw in the Quebec a terrorist attack a little ways back, they tried to blame that on Trump for talking uh, trash about Islam. Mm -hmm. Well, he can keep talking trash about Islam. I'll join him. But the thing is, it's, it's a, they're going to use that because, as we said, the tsunami, the wave has already started. The data is already saying it. We just need the kingdom to get protected. So let's go ahead. Uh, we need to take a quick break, and then let's go ahead and get into the data. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you secure your financial future by protecting and preserving your assets through silver and gold. The protection and preservation of your investment is our first goal. So we are here to serve you with honesty, transparency, and respect. And for a limited time, Cornerstone will waive your first year transfer and setup fees when you roll over your current IRA into a gold or silver IRA. That can save you as much as $1,000. Take control of your future. Register on our website at cornerstoneassetmetals.com or give us a call at 888-747-3309. At Cornerstone, securing your future is our goal. Welcome back. It's been seven years I intervals, which I won't get into the whole Shemitah concept, but understand it is seven year intervals. If you've noticed where these lines converge in the middle and then to the right, the first one on the left is the global recession. You know, we all know what that was. That was the 9-11 issue, right? Then the one in the middle where these lines converged is the global financial crisis, which is really a depression. What we're saying is the divergence is so big you're going to see it come together, but it's what the catalyst is that causes it. And the, I think it's going to be either trade wars or, of course, the collapsing of the European banking system because Deutsche Bank and the other banking systems, especially in Italy, are in some serious trouble. So something's there. All I know is there's so many landmines in the landscape, and I just want the kingdom to be aware of those. So um, I want to go another one that we also know a lot of. I'll just show quickly. It's just crude oil. Now, crude oil itself, production-wise, if you've noticed there with the circle around it, that's actually crude production. So production started spiking, uh, and this is in current one in 17, but look at the lagged U.S. oil rig count. And if, you know, this, I know this doesn't mean a lot to folks, let me just tell you, the rig count's going up, meaning we're really holding on to a lot more inventory. We have tremendous oil buildup, and oil is the engine of economies. And so why is it a big deal to us? If you've noticed way off to the left coming around, it's because the economies aren't moving. They're not using the energy to produce. And so we're having tremendous buildups and hence why the oil prices are so, so low. So what, what does that do to uh, the money, the currency system? What it happens? stresses it out because it, the reserves are not moving through the system. Okay. These, you know how it goes, circulating. So, We're not so the circulating. money has to circulate, or the, the currency has to circulate. So it, it stops the circulation when it builds up then. Yes, and then look at this next one. It's a tremendous one. Now, if we have, I'd love to put this up because it's a big chart, but this is the U.S. government budget surplus deficit total debt. Now, what's fascinating about this, and if, you, if we can't get it up, let me just show you. If you notice the line in the middle, that's when we came off the gold standard. Look to the left, there's nothing there. Meaning we didn't really have budget deficit surplus much because we were on a gold standard keeping our budget right. If you've noticed the line on the bottom, you can't even see it, but it's along the bottom, meaning we didn't have much of a national so, debt. So wait, we were just spending what we had? Yes. Like, like regular human beings? Yes. Okay. So you don't even see the bottom on the right, which is red, <laughs> because we didn't have debt. Mm because we couldn't because we were on the gold standard. And you notice we didn't have any deficits or surpluses. So all of a sudden, the line in the middle comes in, the Federal Reserve's created, or we go with the gold standard in the 70s. But look at the skyrocket of that red line there shooting straight up through the corner. That is our national debt. And if you've noticed, while we've increased our debt as a nation, you now see all the lines dropping below there in the chart there. All those lines are dropping on the chart like rainfall. 
That is our budget deficit. You notice we only had a surplus for a couple years there during the uh, Bush administration, but that's it. You know, people say it was Clinton that did that, but it doesn't matter. Look at the catastrophic collapse since 2005, six of our budget deficit. Now, here's what's crazy. They said we've come back to about five, six hundred uh, billion in a budget deficit. It just dropped a couple hundred billion like this because they're playing funny math. And we still are near a trillion dollars a year in the hole. So if you've noticed, ever since we've done the gold standard versus not, we have increased our money and we have had tremendous debt and deficits. Now, for most folks, you can keep going on and on for a little while, maybe. The government may be able to kick this down for a little while longer, but rest assured, the reckoning is so close, it, all it's going to take is something with China in the Middle East or something in the banking system in Europe and this whole thing is going to unravel like a sweater when you pull a, pull a string. And so we want you to see the data because at least you can be encouraged to be protected and preserved ahead of time. Because I'm here to tell you, if you wait until it's too late, the premiums on silver will be astronomical. And it, it, you will find you will get a lot less than what you could have otherwise. So another thing that you need to see is why we know we as a nation cannot improve it. And this is known as our liability. We will never be able to pay this off. The left side is our tax revenue. You can't even see it. The next one there is the US federal budget. We can barely see it. Then the national debt, which you can barely, well, it's just a little bit red there, right? And look at that big, huge red bar. US unfunded liabilities. Now. This is why it's so important if you have IRA retirement accounts, if you have cash in the kingdom, that you get properly positioned in tangible asset form. If you're thinking short term, you're, you're going to miss it because it'll be probably too late. That unfunded liability is astronomical. It's over $100 trillion. Over $100 How, trillion. Let me ask this question. and I think this is just goofy almost to ask this, but what happens when people get in such debt as individuals that they can't pay their debt back? Right. Default. Exactly. Now, we can't default because we could just print more money. But remember what we talked but about last But then what happens when you print more money? It de yes. Right. This it's, is where we're going. It's like borrowing more money yes. because that's the way they print. The, the, yes. the government adds to this as they keep borrowing yes. and making IOUs to whoever buys their treasury bonds and bills and what have you is what that basically is. Yes. Why would you want, listen, if you're if a you're trillion dollars in debt, I don't want you to give me an IOU. I want you to give me my stuff well, back. This is the problem, Charles, because the world has stopped for the most part. And it has become U.S. Federal Reserve swapping with the European Union to buy our debt. And they're in no better shape than we are. That's my point. Are oh, I think, no, they're, yeah. matter of fact, I don't think they make it. And Japan? Yeah, I what know. What kind of mess are they in? And that's our other trade partner. Yeah. So you see, our main trade partners, Japan and Europe, they're literally wiped out. That bar on, on uh, this bar here, this graph, you can't see Right here, you can't see our revenue. It's so small. But then when you look up, you see how big our liability going forward is, meaning we don't have the money to pay our bills. Something has to give in this equation, and it's going to give during this next crisis and why I have concerns for the kingdom. Now, here's another example of two different forms of our mental stability, financial stability as a nation. This is known as a tariff economy and a bubble economy. A tariff economy, if you look at the chart on the very top there on the left, you notice it's pretty flat, just a couple little blips here and there. That was known as a tariff economy, meaning we were living predominantly through um, taxation in a good way of people with other countries. It, we would put tariffs, which is basically taxes on goods coming in and going. Well, now we don't do that. Now we live in a trade deficit world and we live in a bubble economy. We print all this money. Look at the extraordinary amount of money since the beginning of the 80s. As a nation, we have gotten into what we would call this bubble economy. Look at how staggering in the pit it is. 
Those bubbles are popping soon. And the gray lines you see coming down were recessions and depressions. The big one on the right was 2008. And as you can see why it popped. But it's, if you've noticed, it's happening all over again. It hasn't been fixed. So we're 10 trillion deeper in the hole and it hasn't been fixed. This is a massive bubble that has to blow up. We just don't know the exact when, but I got to tell you, it's close enough that we in the kingdom, if we just get properly protected, we won't be a part of that. And Trump will only be able to get us out of it after it pops, not before. And he knows that. So got to take a quick break, but we'll get right back into the data right after this. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you secure your financial future by protecting and preserving your assets through silver and gold. The protection and preservation of your investment is our first goal. So we are here to serve you with honesty, transparency, and respect. And for a limited time, Cornerstone will waive your first year transfer and setup fees when you roll over your current IRA into a gold or silver IRA. That can save you as much as $1,000. Take control of your future. Register on our website at cornerstoneassetmetals.com or give us a call at 888 747-3309. At Cornerstone, securing your future is our goal. Now, last, last week, you used the word complacency. Yes. Maybe 20 or 30 times during the program. Um, <laughs> I want to ask this question. Do you think that $20 trillion in debt for our U.S. government is going to create problems for them. Well, let's ask. Or, you, or is it going to create problems for us? It, I tell you what, these are questions let's put to, let's put to you, mm -hmm. we the people. Do you think $20 trillion is a problem in debt deficit? If you got a higher credit card bill, you need to pay it off. Do you think that's an issue for you? We're going to ask you some questions here. We're going to do a litany of questions right now, and I want you to ask how you would think of it in terms of your family business and management. And if you're trying to protect and preserve what you have for the future. Let me ask you if these problems are of a concern for you because these are very real. Do you think 20 trillion, if you, think of you as personally, even though this is government, would you have an issue if you increased your budget deficit by 2,000 times, 2,000%? Think about that. Let me ask you this. Do you think that having 75 to 120 trillion in liabilities is a problem. Think about it if you have a family of uh, kids, five kids, and you were sending them to the state college, but every single one of them said, I want to go to Harvard. And now it's going to cost you an unbelievable amount of money, millions for all of them. Would that be a problem? See, that's an unfunded liability, right? Think of as a government, we have 120 trillion of bills for baby boomers, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and all other liabilities that we have, bond holdings and such, we don't have the money for. Where are we going to get it? And do you think it's a problem? At $20,000 billion. <laughs> I know, it's but, staggering. Can you even think, people no. can't think that. No, that's 20,000 yeah. billion. Most people can't think of a trillion, which no, is a Charles. thousand billion. It, it just, it, there's no end to this, it seems like. Uh, well, there's not. Because and it is going to create problems. That's what this Absolutely. is all about right here. Certainly. There's no end because there's mm -hmm. this siphoning of our system. Your wealth is being robbed right now and you don't see it. And we're trying so hard to get people to understand this dollar is coming down. It has to. Our own president and treasury secretary said it has to. It's coming down by gravity, let alone by him pushing it because he knows. What? Here, let me ask this question because... You know, it's wolf, wolf, wolf thing a lot of times. And people say, well, well we don't know when it's going to happen, so everything's fine. Why don't, why don't we think like this? If this doesn't happen in 20 years and I'm still alive in 20 years, why wouldn't I want to go ahead and get fixed now, take care of my retirement now, put it in something tangible now that I know has been good? Do you know how long this has been good? How many years this has been good? since about the uh, turn of the century. Yeah, uh, but it's about it, it used to buy you a ago. full pack and now it buys you no, two cents no, worth. No, I'm talking about how long it's been, has any value whatsoever. Right. You got my coin over there. How long has this been good? 
Yeah. How long's this silver been good? How long has it been used to trade? Yeah. It doesn't change. That's what people need to understand. This is going to have value if this collapses or if it doesn't collapse, if it inflates, if it deflates, this is going to still be valuable. Yeah. And yeah. when people invest in something tangible rather than something that is constantly moving and shifting, you're getting into a danger area when you're when you're playing. This is like playing with the stock market. <laughs> and it's it's I don't mean to laugh, but it's really dangerous because this is almost a get rich quick kind of thinking that if I hang on to this and it just keeps booming up and booming up. But the problem is, is this has not been around very long. And everyone that we've seen that has been around to zero in the past has gone to zero. Now, whether this goes to zero or not, I don't know, but they're printing a whole lot more of it, which means oh, it, they keep slicing the, the pie thinner. It's going to zero, um, but it's going to be retooled into something else. So as we have, you hear about trade deficits, for instance, Donald Trump had said, you know, these trade deficits, it's 500 plus billion. We don't understand it as Americans, why it's a problem, but it's a very severe problem. So the thing is, I'm even gonna ask a question because it's so hard to understand, but let me ask you this. Do you think real unemployment at 24% is a problem? Mm -hmm. There it is right there. If you see those three lines right there, the very top line is known as shadow statistics. That's the real unemployment when you don't play all the funny numbers. That's at 24% right now. 24% of our people, we the people, are not working. That's staggering. And the government's telling you it's down to 4.8%. It's a lie. They're just not telling you everyone who's off the unemployment rolls. So you see, there's a big issue in our world with honesty and transparency, but we're here to show you the data so you can be better informed to get protected and preserved. Because wait until we show you the Dow and the ratios with gold and silver and how those play in next week. And you're gonna see real values real quick. So until then, may God bless you with wisdom and understanding. Be sure you tell somebody about Wealth Transfer News. We're on at this same time every week. And tell somebody about WealthTransferNews.com. You can watch these programs on demand. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you secure your financial future by protecting and preserving your assets through silver and gold. The protection and preservation of your investment is our first goal. So we are here to serve you with honesty, transparency, and respect. And for a limited time, Cornerstone will waive your first year transfer and setup fees when you roll over your current IRA into a gold or silver IRA. That can save you as much as $1,000. Take control of your future. Register on our website at cornerstoneassetmetals.com or give us a call at 888- 747-3309. At Cornerstone, securing your future is our goal. Matthew chapter 25 is the parable of the talents, and it's one of the most profound because the scripture said he gave to every man according to his own ability. And then he made him responsible to manage what he had, not what somebody else had, mm -hmm. what he had. So many times we allow our thinking to go, well, our Social Security is going to take care of us, our retirement is going to take care of us, the government's going to take care of us, and we should be making sure that we manage what belongs to us, what we've worked hard for. You, you say this continually. You know, our That's hard -earned, our biggest concern. Yeah, it's yes. my concern as well. Because we've, been, we've had our Social Security, not Social Security, but our IRAs and mm -hmm. retirements in the wrong place as a kingdom. Uh, we have a lot of the kingdom and ministries of cash in the banks. And just since 9-11, of course, if you had had your IRA in physical silver versus in the wiles of the stock market and bond market, you would be up significantly. I mean, a $100,000 IRA since 9-11 is worth 400000 today, increasing your ability to have buying power. And this is the key for the kingdom. It's about buying power. This is not about investment purposes. And if we're going to maintain the protection and preservation of our kingdom, uh, let alone our individual retirement, we need to be in the right place. And the reason we're saying this is the dollar has been under severe attack uh, globally for quite some time, let alone what's getting ready to take place shortly. Um, you're seeing, see, as well as the world's uncertainty and how it all plays together.
A lot of, you, was that a tall self? Uh, no, you know what it is? I actually, I think I heard a producer talking and I thought he was stopping the program, but it's okay. <laughs> this is live take type television, so. <laughs> well, here, th there is a lot of uncertainty in the world. Yeah. All, although, you know, you mentioned this last week that uh, people that are conservatives have kind of relaxed because they think, well, Donald Trump's in, he's not a politician. And he's going through that term drain the swamp is probably crude, but nevertheless, it's been used. We're going to get rid of the political atmosphere that is in our politics. Welcome to The Wealth Transfer. I'm Terry Saka, Chief Strategist, and I'm along with Dr. Charles Vance, and we invite you to a show this day, this evening, that is going to be filled with a lot more data to help you understand that the world's complacent. But the fact is, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty, even when somebody such as himself, and thank God for people like Mike Pence and uh, people, the, the uh, new appointee for the Supreme Court, those guys uh, are people with a Christian background that stand up and say that it's right to have a Christian background. Thank God they're not ashamed of it. But we can't become complacent with the world. Sometimes people think, well, somebody else is fixing our problems for us, but we are actually responsible for ourselves. Management is a key issue in the scriptures that God holds us responsible to manage the things that he puts within our grasp. Terry, uh, you know,